So welcome to the seminar series in the Gemini Center of Quantum Computing. Today we have André Lestadius uh, with us. He is an associate professor at the Oslo Metropolitan University and an adjunct researcher at the Hüleros Center for Quantum Molecular Sciences. His research addresses formal aspects of electronic structure theory. And this includes both wave function methods and density functional theory. In 2022, he was awarded an ERC starting grant to work on particular regular regularization techniques with ambition of contributing to the understanding of approximate density functionals. Since 2019, he has been the PI of a project focusing on couple cluster methods funded by the Research Council, Council of Norway. So um, we're, I'm very excited to, uh, that you accepted the, uh, to present here. And uh, without further ado, you can take it from here, André. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Franz, for that introduction. That will actually allow me to skip uh, uh, my first uh, and my uh, second slide, <laughs> uh, because that was essentially, uh, yeah, as, as you just uh, summarized. So, so today I will be talking about uh, the work that just like Franz said, I've been involved uh, with since 2019. Um, and in a way, it even goes uh, back further uh, when I first uh, joined the, um, as a postdoc, I work with, with Simon Kvall, uh, who, who, is a, who is a member of the Gemini Center, if I understand things uh, correctly. Uh, so we, we worked on, on, um, uh, on a method called the extended couple cluster that I won't be talking much about at all, but uh, anyhow, so today's talk is about the, the, the couple cluster method from this mathematical perspective. And, and, and this is work done uh, uh, with uh, my postdoc, uh, Mihaly, uh, who should have, if, if not uh, all, but maybe most of the credit for, for all this. And people are interested, we have just two papers that have been accepted uh, online. So I guess they will appear uh, this year uh, soon. Um, Okay, so what is the problem here that I will be uh, ad addressing? So we are interested uh, in solving the, the Schrodinger equation, the electronic part. So I will just, in the interest of time, just skip right ahead, not talk about the Born Oppenheimer approximation and that kind of thing. So we have our electronic part of the Hamiltonian operator here, uh, briefly represented in equation one. And then equation two is sort of like how it, uh, how it looks uh, then typically for some choice of V and, and U here, which is typical the Coulomb, uh, the Coulomb terms. And then also a spin is, is very important, of course, but I will just uh, neglect that altogether. So the wave function here is simply a function of the, the coordinates of all the, uh, of all the N electrons. And then in equation three, you see how I write the, the Schrodinger equation and that's the, title of the talk indicates uh, we are not necessarily interested in, in, in just the ground state. So that the fancy E, the eigenvalue there is, is not necessarily the ground state. Okay, so, but maybe I should just address why should we mathematically study couple cluster uh, method or methods. So it, it is perhaps the most successful approach to accurately solve uh, the Schrodinger equation taking this correlation effects uh, uh, into account. And, and also uh, the, the couple cluster method is quite rich and it, it comes in many different variants. So here I just list a few from my own very biased perspective that I worked with uh, all of these uh, free methods, not so much the last one. Uh, so for instance, this tailored couple cluster is a, it's sometimes referred to a poor man's multi-reference method because multi-reference is, is really tricky in, in couple cluster. Uh, theory and as I mentioned before, this extended couple cluster theory is a more elaborate scheme uh, that that I worked uh, as a postdoc myself together with Seaman Kvall, and and that can it has some practical relevance. For instance, the quadratic couple cluster method can can be be incorporated if if if, if that's uh, if you heard about that method. Uh, and then lastly, here the unitary couple uh, cluster, which is a Hermitian formulation, and then perhaps more, most relevance to the quantum. Comp uh, uh, quantum computing community. Uh, as a disclaimer, I will not, that, that's the only unitary couple cluster. Uh, I will, yeah, I, I won't talk anything about that. We, we actually, 
exactly one year ago, uh, me and my postdoc uh, were in, um, in Berkeley working on, on the unitary couple cluster, working on the sort of representation issue, but it, it was very it was very difficult. So I don't have any results uh, uh, on the unitary couple cluster. So yeah, that's the full disclaimer there. But the whole, the whole uh, uh, how to say, the tools we are using here could potentially uh, also be be applied to unitary couple clusters. It's just that it's a uh, it's very tricky problem. Uh, okay, so what is our toolkit, or how do we mathematically formulate the couple clusters? So, to just give the the crash course, um, we uh, the the way we we, we describe this is that we, we take this quantum chemistry approach that we introduce. Uh, Orbital, so one particle uh, functions that we want to describe our full wave function psi uh, with. So the notation is the the chi k, and k goes from one up to capital K, and where capital K is more than we have electrons. So we we don't just have the trivial case of populating the n lowest uh, orbitals. We actually have more uh, orbitals that we can then excite into. So we generate a determinant basis by just yeah, populating these uh, k orbitals with uh, n electrons. And if we, um, if we, we, we populate the n first uh, orbitals, then we get our reference determinant. I, I will not go into where that comes from. It comes from a hard to fuck ca calculation, for instance, but the sort of what should be kept in mind here is that this, uh, this reference determinant should be in in some way close to the the psi the 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 wave function that that we want to uh, solve for. Um, anyhow, we label all these uh, these determinants with this phi mu, where mu is a multi-index that just tells you which of the orbitals that was used uh, constructing this particular determinant. And in equation four, you can see sort of the uh, yeah the expansion of, of psi in this determinants with different weight, weights called C mu. And if we assume that the weight in the reference determinant is one, uh, we get the, the, the right-hand side there in the equation four. And these little C mu are in, in, in this uh, context called amplitudes. And the cluster of those uh, amplitudes together with this excitation operator X mu forms what we call cluster operator. So, just under equation four, you can see it just neatly summarized as identity plus this cluster operator C acting on the reference determinant. And with this, uh, with this uh, parametrization, the Schrodinger equation can then be summarized in that box in equation five. We can project it on the reference and then we project it on the orthogonal complement to the reference, which is this uh, fancy uh, V uh, space. So here is just to, to illustrate, uh, um, yeah, what, what, what's going on. So we take a very uh, simple case. We have uh, three electrons and we have five orbitals. And just some notation, the, the, to simplify, the determinants are just labeled uh, by the multi-index, which just tells you which of the orbitals that has been used in constructing that determinant. So in the figure here, you can see the, the nodes in, in this excitation graph being the determinants, and then the edges are the, the, the different excitations. So on the first row, uh, or you can call it row or first level, or if this is sort of, this is the reference determinant, say it's the zero level, and then the first level here will then be all the, uh, the possible single excitation. And on the second level here, all the uh, double excitation. So that is the lingo used in quantum chemistry, like single and double, uh, et cetera. And now when we have that CI uh, parametrization in place, uh, we can now move on to the, to the couple cluster parametrization. So we saw on, on, on some previous slide that we write the wave function as the identity plus C, the cluster operator acting on the reference determinant. And now in the, in the CC world, we instead write this as E to the T. So E to the T acting on phi naught, where T is a cluster operator just as C. Uh, we just have a different uh, name for it. And because we cannot excite more than uh, N electrons uh, out of the reference determinant, the uh, expansion here of the exponential terminates uh, after uh, the nth power, so that at most uh, T to the power N. 
there there is a there is a convention uh, one could say in in in, in a couple cluster theory uh, and, and similar to C and CI that uh, these cluster operators so here's C and T you uh, partition them into uh, how with a subscript uh, 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 labeling how many electrons they they excite so C subscript one is then that part of C that accounts for all the single excitations, et cetera. So you can partition C1 up to Cn. So that's the excitation rank. And you can do the same with the with the cluster operator T. And here is then just, uh, uh, yeah, you just uh, compare uh, the CI and the, and the CC expansion, uh, how, how they relate. So you can do this in the full CC and the, the full CI case where they are actually are equivalent. I will talk a little more about that later. Is is there a difference between um, is there a simple interpretation of T two and T one square? So T one square is per definition twice a, a single excitation. Is T two? Oh, okay. Yeah. So so this this yeah that's that's a good question. So so in, in the lingo here is that you 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 differentiate between connected and disconnected excitations. But but they are mm -hmm. so I, I will show you a little later how 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 the CI and, and CC compare uh, when you plug it into the to the to the Schrodinger uh, equation. But essentially, uh, there is no it, it's sort of a the the T one squared is called a disconnected double excitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they they are they are different in a way. Yeah. This, yeah, this they, yeah. if you take a, a t a t one raised to the power n will not then account for all uh, nth uh, ex, uh, excitation of rank n. It, it's right. sort of I mean you you have uh, less uh, parameters to you you will just describe a portion of of of, of the full n uh, excitation rank. If if I don't know if I answered your question, but that I was, think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 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 let me move on. So. Just some little notation here to 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 uh, to be able to to continue. So with this, um, yeah, what is it called? This uh, blackboard bold, maybe V. Uh, that is our amplitude space. Uh, these are the the coefficients, the expansion coefficients, but we call them amplitudes in in, in couple cluster, uh, and they are sort of connected with the corresponding wave function. When you from those amplitudes, you create that. Uh, um, that cluster operator, uh, cluster operator that acts on the reference determinant, you get a wave function. So you can sort of move between uh, inner products on the amplitude space with the inner products on the on the wave function space. So and this fancy V here that we already encounter is sort of the uh, the corresponding wave function space, which will then be on the orthogonal complement of the reference determinant because we. We only speak about excitation because the weight in the reference determinant is one, so that parameter is is, is typically set. So so this t phi naught will be in the orthogonal complement of the reference determinant in this corresponding wave function space, and yeah, this is the the link between the cluster operator and its amplitudes. Just to refresh uh, the memory. Okay, so what we do now is that we take the the our exponential parametrization and we plug it in into the Schrodinger equation. So that that you can see here on the on the top, and now we can, for instance, multiply with e to the minus t, and then project on this orthogonal complement to the reference determinant, and then that has to be zero. And we can also take uh, multiply this with e to the minus t, and then take the inner product with the reference determinant. Then we get the energy. And that is now uh, here denoted the coupled cluster uh, energy. So equation six is sort of the the what the Schrodinger equation becomes when we when we use the exponential ansatz of, of coupled cluster. And this also allows us then to define this uh, the the CC mapping of the single reference coupled cluster mapping A, and that's down here. And here you see that uh, yeah I, I spent a little time on the previous slide discussing these inner products. So, so here maybe you it's it's actually a dual pairing, but I I won't go into those details here. But this is the this is the couple cluster mapping uh, that uh, yeah. So so it's clear from equation six that you want to then set a equals zero to solve uh, your CC equations, and then here is the corresponding uh, CC energy. So this is just to to summarize essentially what the Schrodinger equation becomes 
once you make this exponential uh, parametrization or ansatz. And let me just uh, give a, a, a brief example. So let's say we have three electrons and we do these single doubles. And then maybe you recall the notation that these subscripts just tells you, okay, the T has now single excitations and also double excitations. This is just how we write. And, and as I just said, we want to solve A equals zero because that's what the Schrodinger equation has become. And then uh, from, from the previous slide and just plugging in that T is T1 plus T2, we need to solve uh, this, uh, uh, the first bracket here uh, on, on this slide. And if you now just expand, uh, you obtain this second bracket. So here you can just, this is just my attempt to compare with, with the CI method, which is perhaps the most intuitive one when you, if you know a Hartree-Fock, that's a determinant uh, solution, and then you just expand with more determinant, then the corresponding CI uh, equation will just then have this T1 and T2, but of course, then we call it C1. And, and, and C2. So this is uh, how it sort of differs now when we make this nonlinear uh, exponential uh, parametrization. And these last two terms on the, on the, um, in the second uh, equation of the second bracket here, these are actually then a, a triple uh, ex uh, excitation, but they also call disconnected terms. So it's not the same as include uh, the C3 because the amount of uh, parameters here are, are, are reduced. They sort of come constrained in a way. But this, but, but on the, as a, how to say, as a uh, benefit of the copper cluster method, you get this higher uh, excitation, even though you truncated it up to doubles. So it's, it's a way to, to account for higher excitation there uh, through, through the CC parametrization. But okay. Uh, uh, let, uh, let me just discuss the couple cluster equation a little more. So recall that the Schrodinger equation gives us this uh, A uh, equals zero. And it's perhaps not clear from my previous slide, but this is actually a set of uh, polynomial equations in, in the amplitudes. But even for, for very few electrons, and let's say you have 10, uh, 20 uh, orbitals, like one particle basis function, the corresponding Besut number is huge. It can be in the hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions, uh, for very very small uh, uh, systems and, and a medium sized uh, orbital basis, uh, and that's a, a huge, typically a huge overestimate of the the, the number of solutions. And with solutions, I here mean sort of a physical uh, solution, which is sort of a, a little, perhaps a little uh, unprecise. Um, uh, term, uh, but uh, at least, yeah, from the mathematical perspective, but but yeah, I will just say that number of solution as physical solutions, however uh, you, you judge uh, what they are. Uh, and uh, and one way to, to perhaps judge this is to look at the full uh, the full CI, which uh, which is equivalent to full uh, couple cluster. And there is sort of in full CI, the number of solutions you get is sort of dictated by the size of your matrix. Uh, and, and, and then you can sort of, yeah, I, I have included a little cartoon here, just, the, just my attempt to, to sort of give an overview of the situation. So if, if, if uh, uh, you increase the, uh, you sort of, you refine your basis. So you include more and more excitation and, and, and the, with CI, you will just approach sort of the, the, the full dimension of, of the problem uh, uh, with the number of solution growing. Uh, whereas in couple cluster, due to the non-linear non nature, you might uh, have uh, many more solution for more truncated schemes. So you sort of, the number of so solution comes down from, uh, from above. And, and then of course, in the full CC and full CI, they are the same. And, and there you sort of, uh, yeah, you get the same number of solutions. So that means that, Typically, you have to truncate and, and then run your calculation. Then if you're not just interested in the ground state solution, you sort of have, uh, it's quite a challenge then to determine what are, which of all these many solutions are the physical ones that actually then corresponds to something uh, in, in, the, uh, in the full CI or uh, full CC uh, limit. Okay, I will come back to this uh, when I discuss uh, homotopies, but first uh, we need to, uh, um, 
uh, discuss so, some some other things. So so first, I I just uh, uh, want to go through this uh, quickly because this is quite uh, uh, gives a nice uh, illustration of what's what's going here. So this is I think this is sort of in the literature, but it was pieced together but with my postdoc. And it's, uh, it's for me, this was very nice uh, to see. So uh, assume that, that we are in the full uh, CC or full CI uh, case, and we have solved the, the, the coupled cluster equation. And the solution is here, this T subscript star. And now given uh, a wave function that here, you can see the CI parametrization, then this uh, wave function here uh, satisfies the Schrodinger equation for some uh, eigenvalue e, if and only if we can write uh, this ci parametrization with this e to the minus t star, where t star comes from the solution of the couple cluster equation. So that can now be written as the right-hand side here, and where this r, so r is another cluster operator that solves the set we have here. So r is essentially, uh, let's just neglect the first equation here, but here is it's essentially uh, the right eigenvector of the similarity transform and projected uh, Hamiltonian. So just to get a little feeling what's going on, uh, just bear with me here and just go through uh, some different cases. So for instance, let's say that this uh, T star here, we solve the couple cluster equations, and then this couple cluster energy is actually the energy, uh, the eigenvalue here that shows up in the Schrodinger equation. Then we can just pick r equals zero because the first equation then, yeah, that, that, that balance. And then we can pick r uh, zero. And this I would say is sort of the typical, this is sort of the intuitive uh, um, uh, picture of couple cluster that you sort of, with your T star, you actually uh, target uh, and, and, and let's say an eigenstate of the Schrodinger equation where the CC energy is that, uh, uh, eigenvalue. Okay, let's let's continue. So we stay in this case that the the, the T star here actually gives us uh, uh, this uh, eigenvalue here. But now uh, let's say we can find other solutions that uh, uh, to this equation here that are not the trivial ones. But then that just means that uh, we have a generate uh, uh, we have a generate uh, eigenvalue uh, e here in our Schrodinger equation. And, and this is uh, uh, yeah, this is a very very complicated uh, case to to analyze in, in the couple cluster theory. But at least then uh, yeah, this uh, uh, yeah, this this pinpoints uh, this I would say. And and I will comment just a, a little more on that. But yes, we also do the, the the my last case here, and that is when let's say this this T star here. You solve the couple cluster equation. You get the couple cluster energy, but this is not the energy of the eigenstate uh, you want to target. And now let's say you solve and find non-trivial solution to this equation here, then what you what you actually do when you're solving for this uh, excitation operator R is that you find an uh, excited states uh, with respect to the first uh, energy you computed, your couple cluster energy. And this is known in the literature as, uh, as equation of motion. So a uh, couple clusters. So then typically this T star gets you the ground state energy, and then you solve for the right eigenvectors here of the projected similarity transform Hamiltonian to, to get a few uh, excited states. Um, yeah, but as, and now returning to the case uh, two, you can see that you could then uh, uh, in principle use this to also deal with the energy uh, when you stay at the same uh, energy level. Okay. Uh, anyhow, so uh, my last, uh, the last thing I want to discuss is uh, this uh, uh, approach we, we took. So, so again, the, my postdoc Mihaly uh, came up with this idea to 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 try to extend on previous mathematical analysis of coupled cluster theory, and and uh, so we looked at this uh, topological uh, degree theory, uh, which is sort of a. a a way to 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 count uh, algebraically count the multiplicities of, of zeros. Um, so I will just skip. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, here the degree can be computed by by terms of the the index. And let me just skip uh, right away to 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 this case when we have isolated non-degenerate zeros. So as I uh, I think I, I just mentioned uh, a minute 
uh, or so ago that the degenerate case is is, is very is very tricky. So essentially, when the the derivative of the coupled cluster mapping has a non-trivial null space, and then what that actually then corresponds to solving for these uh, right eigenvectors, uh, which connects to the uh, this EOM, but the EOM, uh, yeah, always assume the the non-degenerate ground state. So so. I don't want to go into much too much detail here, but we just skip to this. This is sort of the the simplest case that we 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 want to deal with, even though that we can describe degenerate situations somewhat with with topological degree. But anyhow, so we just uh, in this case we can compute the degree as uh, through the index by just looking at the sign of the Jacobian, and here is the re a result to to then establish existence. And, and and typically in the full uh, CI or uh, full CI limit, you, you, existence is there, but it's for for the for the truncated scheme. You wanna sort of okay, just because the full CC or full CI uh, uh, problem has solutions, uh, do the does there exist a corresponding truncated solution that you can connect? So here's topological degree theory is 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 very useful, and in particular uh, because of this fact. That you have this uh, the, the the degree is homotopy invariant. So there are of course many ways to to uh, to 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 choose relevant homotopies here. Um, and and we and we went with one that was already in the literature designed by 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 two quantum chemists that I will come back to. But this is just to give a little cartoon of the situation. So so let's say uh, at lambda equal one we have the full CI or the full uh, CC. Uh, case and then we have some truncated scheme of couple cluster that you sort of force to 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 live with because that's yeah because of the yeah because of the problem it's so high dimensional so you need to truncate so at lambda equals zero you could for instance have this couple cluster single double uh, scheme but then as as this little cartoon i had that you typically have when you truncate you have much more uh, solution that you sort of can and make sense of in, in the full uh, CI limit. So you sort of want to connect uh, solution, truncated solution and see if they actually correspond to a physical solution. And then you can use this uh, homotopy invariance to sort of uh, prove existence. You create some little tube that can connect them under certain assumptions. Uh, so, but let me, uh, the, my, my last order of business here to discuss this uh, uh, homotopy that was, uh, uh, Devised by two quantum chemists, Kowalski and Pitsuk. So what you what you do here, you take your full amplitude space, and that's denoted with a, su a superscript. So remember, subscripts were sort of excitation rank, but here the superscript on the amplitude space just means that this is the full space or the bigger space. But we can always think of this uh, 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 V superscript one as the uh, the full uh, the untruncated case. And then we have some uh, uh, smaller space where we actually truncate. So this is what we typically would do in practice. So this could be, for instance, a, a, a single double uh, amplitude space. And there, this row is, is simply the rank. So when 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 if row is two, then it's single double. So that's that's just notation here to to uh, yeah to just denote uh, how many excitation we, we we include as far as the excitation rank go. And then, uh, for different reasons, we 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 show we chose to call this the angle space, but it's really just the L two uh, orthogonal uh, complement. So we, this is the decomposition here. So the truncated space, the full space, and this is the angle space that accounts for the difference. And now I have to uh, uh, introduce a little notation just to keep the equation a little more compact. So up until now, uh, this the similarity trans from Hamilton and. Uh, has appeared in its full, but now I will use this not notation with a parenthesis T to just uh, keep the no notation a little uh, more compact. And then the KP homotopy then looks like this. Uh, so you can note uh, perhaps that when lambda is equal one, then we have the full uh, CC equations because then with lambda one here, everything then adds up uh, on the full uh, amplitude space, so with uh, T superscript one. And at lambda equals zero, this vanish, this becomes the sort of uh, usual truncated couple cluster equation, but then you also get some auxiliary term. 
So what I just said now is, is summarized in, in this slide. So, so by design, the KP homotopy is like this at the lambda equal one end, you actually look at the couple cluster uh, equation in its fullness. So untruncated couple cluster. At the lambda equals zero end of the KP homotopy, you look at the usual truncated CC equations, but you also have an auxiliary equation that you need to solve. So this is just how it's uh, constructed so you can uh, analyze it in, in, in the best uh, possible way. I mean, you can try to come up with a, with a better homotopy, but uh, we, we didn't uh, succeed with that. We, we, we introduced one alternative, but I don't know if, if it's, uh, it's, uh, it's better. Uh, uh, anyhow, so with this uh, KP homotopy, we were able to prove uh, uh, actually a, a, a first order uh, uh, error estimate but not just for the ground state, it, it is uh, technically for any eigenstate. So the setting here is, as I uh, mentioned, that this is the full uh, amplitude space. This is now our zero or the full uh, couple cluster equation. So the superscript one is the full space. The subscript star is just that it's all A equals zero. And then the double star, that is now the solution of the KP homotopy at the lambda equals zero end. So that has, if I just go back, that has two contributions. So it has the usual truncated CC equation structure, but then it also has this auxiliary part. I will go back and comment on that a, a little uh, uh, later. So, okay, so that's the setting now. So assume now this non uh, orthogonality con uh, condition. So this is your, this is your uh, standard truncated CC solution put as a wave function. And this is now the, the full CI solution. So this cannot have overlap zero. So if that's non-zero, then the difference between your, uh, your uh, sort of lambda equals zero solution uh, um, minus the, or the difference to the, the, the full CI or full CC uh, energy is less or equal to some constant that I will discuss. And then this the size of this uh, auxiliary term that you get from solving this equation. And this equation here actually uh, is very similar to, to what you would solve in Taylor coupled cluster. So this sort of offers uh, a, a kind of a posteriori error estimate drawing from, uh, from, from Taylor coupled cluster calculations. Uh, let me just also discuss this constant C here. Uh, so this constant C, of course, it blows up if you have, they are orthogonal. But, but I, that, that's a problem that I will talk on the next uh, slide. Uh, so you, of course, want to have a, a, yeah, as much as overlap as possible here. And then uh, you also have the size of this angle space. Uh, so the smaller that is, the, the smaller will this constants become, which is good. Uh, and then this constant here actually also include this fluctuation potential. So the Hamiltonian, it uh, can be uh, partitioned into the Fock operator and something uh, more. And that more is that fluctuation potential. So when coupled cluster theory typically works is when this fluctuation potential is, is, is sort of like a perturbative uh, contribution. So this all sort of then contributes to, to a small uh, constant. And then of course the, the size of this then uh, tells you uh, how far you are from the exact energy and your, uh, KP lambda equals zero end of your energy. But this will actually become the, the, the usual truncated uh, couple cluster energy if you at least uh, uh, truncate on the single doubles level. So you don't go uh, below that. You at least have both single and double excitation included. So here, just I'm just gonna finish up with some, 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 some comments here. So uh, first off, if this auxiliary equation you solve that for and get zero, then yeah, then you have uh, the full CC solution and no error in your energy. This is what I just mentioned. If you the truncated scheme as, is at least on the single double level, then this uh, uh, auxiliary part does not contribute to the to the couple cluster energy. So it's just this what you obtain from your usual truncated couple cluster energy. So this is much more appealing uh, that you sort of yeah, this is what you would call your energy from your truncated, uh, uh, from your computation based on the truncated couple cluster. And this is the full, and then this is the auxiliary thing you have to solve. And as I mentioned, this sort of offers 
a kind of a posteriori estimate. Uh, and again, with this practical use of the KP auxiliary, is that you can link it to sort of the, the framework or, 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 or tailor couple cluster, which I haven't discussed here. So that, that's just a uh, that's just a side comment. And then lastly, this with the orthogonality condition, since we typically describe a system that is non-degenerate. So that means that if they are orthogonal, they describe different eigenstates. And then, of course, it doesn't make sense to compare the eigenvalues because they, yeah, of course, you don't, you can't bound the difference if they are, if they are different, uh, they, they're describing different eigenstates. So that's, that's sort of like a sanity check. Okay, so I see that I maybe uh, I'm slightly a couple minutes over the, the time, but that was uh, essentially what I wanted to to discuss. So thank you for, for, for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Um, are there any questions from the audience? I see uh, people applauding, that's good. <laughs> Um, if there are questions, please either raise your hand or just go ahead and shout. I think uh, Alexander was first. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, this might be just completely irrelevant or very stupid. Mm. But when I looked at this, probably somewhat because the names are similar, but in um, in lattice theory, we have something called the linked tester explanation, which is completely different, but it's sort of some of the same things comes up when you do expansions and then you have these exponentials and then you have this inclusion, inclusion exclusion principle to sort of get generators of this thing. And this is not important, but um, whenever we do that thing for different theories, um, graph theory has a tendency of popping up. Uh, and I was just wondering if it does in your case as well. Yeah, I'm not, I've, I don't think, uh, I don't know really what to, to, uh, to, to answer there. I mean, you can use it to describe this, uh, the excitation scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, a very nice sort of, uh, uh, summary and you can describe the different kind of couple cluster methods how they differ what kind of excitation you allow and so on uh, but uh, for the actual analysis uh, yeah it, it's just a very nice way to structure things uh, yeah so so I think uh, yeah I, I think it's the I think it's the the same uh, but yeah, we have only used it sort of like uh, as a bookkeeping kind of thing to sort of understand what's 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 going on in a way. Uh, yeah, but I guess it's the same. Yeah. So you don't use it for. Um, well, I guess to some extent. Yeah, I guess it's similar. Yeah, to some extent. To, to yeah. bookkeeping and uh, yeah. things that are the same from a graph theory perspective, generally have do the same things in the theory. Yeah, so I would say if the couple cluster, there are so many, there are so many variants, and people come up with clever scheme that that could work on, on when you do calculations. Uh, that is kind of nice to have like some kind of framework how to summarize and compare the different uh, how you select the different kind of excitations. If, if this is sort of how I understand your questions. Maybe maybe I'm a little confused, but this is yeah, this no, is it's, my it's, take. It's not yeah. a well formed question. It's yeah. uh, sort of musing. But thank you. Yeah. Um, there's another question from Seaman. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so uh, thanks for a nice overview of this uh, of this work, which is which is uh, uh, rather different than uh, what uh, we did before. So it's, there are many new things, and I wonder about. So we have discussed uh, this at an earlier occasion, but these these um, error bounds on on the energies have uh, these been sort of tested to to see if they are pessimistic or uh, optimistic or no? We have you mean uh, numerically? Yeah, for example, yeah. yeah, that would be maybe the most. Um... Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a good point because that's sort of our underst I mean. Yeah, our uh, very naive idea is that uh, uh, 
one should actually try to 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 combine, say, like a, a standard couple cluster single doubles uh, calculation, and then do this kind of tailored couple cluster approach on top of that. So you would sort of have to tweak it uh, uh, a little. It's a little different from sort of the standard tailored couple cluster formulation because, of course, this is not uh, this is a partition of excitation rank not on the split different orbitals, but I guess it, it looks very similar to, you know, the Taylor couple cluster equations. Uh, so if you can sort of, yeah, have a, a draw on that to, to make this, to, so you actually can solve this auxiliary equation, then I guess you could then investigate uh, this thing. But of course, this constant here, to have numerical values on, on this constant, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's not an. I mean, like from from you have to use uh, you sort of have to generate that somehow. Uh, you you cannot. Uh, uh, this is not the paper and pen uh, things to to work out. So it's sort of like like you mentioned before our the the previous work that sort of based on this strong monotonicity also has these problems, right? That they have constants that you cannot give numerical values. So that shows up again here. But you can compute this side, and you, if you can solve that auxiliary equation, you get uh, at least uh, one part of the right hand side. So you you could sort of yeah do something numerically. Yeah, but we haven't done that. Uh, we haven't done that. No. Because it's a, it's a very um, I am not aware of any such estimates elsewhere in the literature. Right. So it's a very it's a it's a completely new uh, um, new in type of insight. Yeah. So, the, so that it would be really nice if it was investigated to some extent, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. This, this, that, 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 that that's a good point. And but we only formulate it as a rough idea that it could be perhaps you can draw on the TC's uh, Taylor couple cluster formulation uh, mm -hmm. to 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 obtain something. Uh, uh here yeah it completely if you try to put this into the extended couple class it completely breaks down in a way it's it gets super complicated so okay. yeah so but uh, yeah anyhow no but that's a good point but that that we haven't done no and and my my second question is uh i it was um uh, difficult for me to to follow everything but is the formulation of the abstract results that you have yeah, it's uh, tied to the weak formulation of the Schoenner equation, just like Orbiter did in um, in this 2013 paper, or is is it, uh, or is it sort of very uh, more general, or is it restricted to the finite dimensional case? Or yeah, yeah. So the, the, yeah, yes, exactly. So the, yeah, the first the first answer is yes. I I I would say. That uh, since I mean, like uh, uh, this uh, here, uh, yeah, this uh, the 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 CC mapping A. This is the weak formulation, right? It comes from mm -hmm. that you're testing the Schrodinger equation on the against the excited determinants. But you're right that it is because it is topological degree theory. It is a, a limited to the finite dimensional case. Uh, mm -hmm. But we we are looking at this s this s plus condition that I, that we discussed a lo long time ago also, uh, and that might uh, that might uh, uh, give a, a root to the infinite dimensional case because the s plus condition is a slightly weakened uh, version of the strong monotonicity. So you might hope that it could work in the infinite dimensional case, but at the same time allowing not just the ground state formulation. Uh, uh, because I uh, I tried this uh, homotopy thing for for a while back yeah. on my own on a on a system uh, or uh, on a boson couple cluster formulation. So so then it the infinite dimensional formulation breaks down. Yeah, these uh, ex erasing operators are uh, not bounded. So then e to the t will not be a bounded operator anymore. So there everything breaks down. But the finite dimensional uh, equation still makes sense as a polynomial yeah. equation. So, so it sort of makes sense to try to follow the solutions using this uh, homotopy type argument. Yeah. But 
I had some difficulty. I mean, it can also be my very uh, not so skillful programming of uh, the homotopy uh, continuation. But uh, I didn't. Uh, I mean, when you saw this, um, when you saw this cartoon of the solutions, I recognized uh, some of it from my simulations. But like, like for example, the the dashed arrow that go that escapes. Yeah. Uh, both both the top and the lower one. I I I saw those. Yeah. Uh, there were also. Ah, now I see you have some points there that are sort of isolated at lambda equals one. That are yeah. not because there were some solutions that I could not find. Uh, okay, so now now it makes sense. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, <laughs> because I I I experienced uh, exactly this type of of picture. Yeah, I could only find a limited number of solutions, really, of the full uh, of the full uh, problem, and that uh, was strange to me. Like, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. is also the problem that yeah, no, no. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a very tricky, <laughs> it's it's very tricky when you're interested in all the solutions, and also that because in couple cluster when you truncate, all solutions are not physical either, right? So uh -huh. so you sort of yeah. So it's uh, uh, yeah no no but this uh, yeah yeah this um, th this little cartoon was was uh, that that's uh, my postdoc who made it so it's probably much more clever than than <laughs> than I that than than yeah I think he worked on trying to to show the different situation yeah. because I know the 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 this chemist that worked on it I mean what they essentially do that uh, I think this is what then connects to what you do they use some some uh, some homotopy i mean like say at the lambda equals 0 and lambda equal 1 they find all solution with 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 uh, uh with some homotopy approach and then they sort of just try to then connect by by uh, yeah i mean they don't do uh, some uh, they don't do a homotopy approach on each point here in between they just try to connect with some yeah with some newton method or something like that to, uh, take a step in lambda and then see what happens mm -hmm. So, so that's sort of what they, they numerically uh, do. But this topological degree theory is really cool with the existence that you can, because it's sort of, uh, it can actually, you can actually talk about the specific uh, truncation level, like single doubles. In the, pre in the previous mathematical analysis, you, you don't, you can only say, oh, if the truncation is, you know, sufficiently uh, refined, then there exists a truncated solution, but you don't even know if that's a, is that a single doubles, triples, etc. You don't know that. Uh, but the homotopy approach actually allows you to talk about specific actual uh, truncation schemes. Of course, it's riddled with other problems. Uh, with, <laughs> uh, and but at least uh, that's very appealing to me. At least that you can talk about the actual methods in use. Mm -hmm. Yes, but that that was a. Now I took off on a tangent. But. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't see any more questions, so let's uh, just thank you one more time for this uh, nice presentation and the nice uh, Q and A. Thank you very much.